All right, this is section three. Um, so what are four main types of investment? Um, investments are really important for you um, because it's kind of how you make extra money. Um, so stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and then property. Um, the greatest return is gonna be stocks. Okay, so stocks is a share of a company. If, oh, oh Lord, so sorry. There we go. All right. If you're starting a business but do not have the capital or money you need to purchase the basic to start, you can sell part ownership of the company to others to get money you need to begin. As a company grows, the value of the stock increases. When a company offers shares of ownership, it's called a publicly traded company. A company can go public at any time, especially if they need the capital to expand, improve, or even replace old equipment. A common stock gives you part ownership without the liability and debts of the company. Though your stock value may go down if the debts are high. Okay, so your friend's business just went public and you invested 60000 The investment from all the partners was 320000 What percent of the company do you own now? So you would take... Come on. There we go. So you would take sixty thousand and divide by three hundred twenty thousand, and then um, multiply by a hundred. When you do that, you're gonna get eighteen point seven five. So no, you don't have the majority, okay? Because that would be at fifty percent. So how can you find the cost per share? Stock prices are published every day, so you can check them online. The New York Stock Exchange and National Association of Securities Dealers are two of the largest stock markets. You've probably seen them mentioned on the news. The market where buying and selling takes place. But you can do the transactions through an investment broker or even on your own online. So using the ticket or MF. MSFP at the right. Did the value of the stock increase or decrease? Well, it went down by 1.3%. So the way you read this is you look at the arrow here, this little down symbol, and then whatever the amount is. So 1.3 down. Now, Andrea and Dina and Lindsay invested in a partnership with a ratio of 7, 9, 14. Respectfully, 10 years later, the partnership was worth uh, $1,800,000. Andrea decided to sell her shares. What should she expect the value of her sales of shares to be? So this total is out of 30. So seven out of the 30, which is the first number. And we're going to multiply it by $1,800,000. That's going to be 420000 Now that you've bought stock, how do you make money? As company grows, the stock may increase, though they can decrease over time. The stock market value is volatile. If you invested 1,000 in Netflix stocks 10 years ago, what would be worth now? What was the increase steady over time? So annual return was 39.06%. Okay, and we can see that from here. Okay, and then so what you're going to do is you're going to take A, which is your amount that you're going to get, take the thousand, multiply one plus 0 0.03, mm, try that again, 0 0.3906, and we're doing it for 18, no, 10 years. When we plug that in, that's going to be 2740.97. Okay, so in 10 years, you just went from 1,000 to 27,000. What caused the change in growth? The number of subscribers. So as they make more money, the more money you make. Okay. Different types of stock, large cap, mid cap, um, and small cap. There we go. Um, the safest stocks are large cap stocks. They have a history in the market and are reliable companies. Stocks also split, which means you can buy one, but now but now own two. The price will drop when this happens and when the value increases, you now own double. Okay, so 
Caitlin owns 140 shares of stock that sells for $39 a share before a three for two split is announced. After the split, how many shares of stocks will Caitlin own and what will they be worth? What would two for three split mean? Okay, so she does a two for three split, which means that you've got um, 140 times that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's talk about the three for two first. My apologies. You've got three for two, and it's 140, and we're trying to figure out what X is. So when you do this, it's going to be almost like a cross-multiply situation. So you're going to get 280 equals 3X, and when you solve for X, you're going to get 93. That two for three split is the same setup. Okay, so you're going to cross multiply. And so this will give you times three. So 420 equals 2x. When you solve for x, that's going to give you 210. Right? And that's how much each split would be, or each thing would be worth. Now, 93 shares is worth. A hundred and forty times thirty nine because that's how much they cost, which is going to be five thousand four hundred and sixty. So if you do five thousand four hundred and sixty and we divide it by ninety three, that means that each share um is worth each okay, let me write that down here. each share is worth $58.71. Okay. Now, even if the stock price stays the same, you may still be offered dividends, a part of the profit of the company, a return for your investment. When you sell stock and have made a profit, this is called capital gain and will need to be claimed on your income tax. Annual yield is the average annual increase in value of stock. Okay, and here's the formula for that. Okay, so on question nine, has Verizon Communications Incorporated paid a total annual dividend of two dollars? Two dollars thirty-two two point three two two five. Okay, per share for twenty seventeen. So the share price closed at $48.64. So we're going to take 2.3225, and we're going to divide it by 48.64. And when we do that, we're going to get 0. 0.0477. So the percent yield was 4.77%. Again, using that formula from above. Okay. Looking at question 10, it says Jake bought... 40, 540 shares of Sound Foundation stock years ago for $44.50 per share. He sold them yesterday for $49.54 per share. What was the capital gain? So we're going to take the new and subtract the old. And we're going to divide it by the old. And multiply by 100. This formula is kind of familiar from like the first unit. Okay. Capital gains is just a fancy way of saying percent change. That's why that formula looks familiar from like the first um, semester stuff. All right. Profit is when you make money and loss is when you lose money in an investment. Usually the purchasing of stocks also involves a fee or commission to the company you're buying through. Whether a person called a stockbroker or a company such as E-Trade, many online companies advertise no commission fees, but there are also sometimes other hidden fees that you need to be aware of. Do your homework before starting. Um, so I can purchase 970 shares of stock at $43 a share on her broker's advice and pays 1.5% broker fees. She sells it when the value increased to 47,301 a month. Later, 
and uses a discount broker who charges her $19 per trade. What are her net proceeds after fees? So you got the cost of the stock. So cost of stock is the number of shares. So she bought 970 shares. Cost per that plus the commission fee. So times 90, 970 times 43, because that's how much she bought them for. So when she plugs that in, she's going to get, you're going to get 42335.65. Okay. Now, then when you take profit, you're going to plug in. You get 47300, which is how much it was sold for minus 19 and that's going to give you 47281 now net proceeds is going to be subtract the profit minus the cost so profit minus the cost is the net proceeds so this minus that is going to give us 4945.35. Okay. Mel bought X shares of stock that sold for $31.50 per share. He paid a 1% commission fee. The total cost of his investment, including her broker fee, was 5,726.70. How many shares did he purchase? Okay, so we don't know how many shares. We're doing all this junk again. We don't know how many shares. The cost per trade was $3.51.50. And then we're going to add that to the cost per share, which was $3.50 times the commission fees. So we've got, we don't know how many shares times the percentage. Okay. And that's going to be 5,726.70. That's the information that they gave us. All right. Now we're going to multiply out and distribute. When we do this, that's going to give me 0.315x is equal to 5,726.70. And when we solve for x, we're going to have x equals 180 shares. Now, bonds are a little different. Bond is a loan that you are issued from by the government, in municipalities, or companies. Okay, so let me scroll down and write that out. Bonds, I just need to download this. I need to quit working on this. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Okay. It's a loan issued by government municipalities or companies. Okay, bonds have a face value, what the bond is worth at the end of the loan without interest and a purchase value, um, what you are loaning the company, usually less than the face value. Bonds um, can earn more interest than a savings account and are usually safer than stock. Bonds can be sold by corporations, cities, and federal government. Bonds issued by a city are called municipal bonds. and can pay for special projects in a city. Bonds issued by the federal government are the safest investment, but the interest is low. These are EE or I savings bonds. So what's the difference between stocks and bonds? Stock, you own part of the company. So ownership. Okay, and then bonds are less risky um, and you invest. You invest, you uh, are more likely to get more back. Okay, so um, less risky and more likely to get money back. Okay. okay, so number 14. You buy a government issued bond for $200. The bond has a fixed rate of 1%, a variable rate of 4.62%. That compounds monthly. Calculate the composite rate and how much the bond will be worth after two years, assuming the rates did not change. So, 
$200 times 0 0.01. That's the fixed rate earned. That's $2. Okay. Then we're going to find the total amount using the compound interest formula. Oh, this is going to be 200 times 1 plus the rate, which was 0.0462. Up here. Divided by 12. Because it said monthly. And 12 for two years. Now that's $219.32. Now, the bond after two years is worth $219.32 plus the $2 for the fixed rate. And so that's a whopping $221.32. Now, how much did it actually change? So that's finding the APR. That's the rate that it's changing at. And that's going to be 221.32 minus your initial, which was 200, divided by 200. And you're going to multiply that guy by 100. And that would be 10.6 for the two years. If we want to find it for the one year, it's 5.33%. So this is the composite rate. So there's a difference between variable rate, fixed rate, and the composite rate. Fixed rate is what you um, are going to get every single year. And then the variable rate is if it, there's an influx in inflation and that kind of stuff. And then composite rate is putting it all together. Okay. All right. Um, mutual funds is the last little section. Okay, I'm going to try to do this pretty quickly before this. So mutual fund. This is a collection of stocks, bonds, and other investment vehicles. Okay. Um, diversifying the investment is very important. So Charlotte invested $120,000 in stocks, bonds, and real estate several years ago. She diversified the investment according to the following percentages. 33% stocks, 42% bonds, real estate is 25%. So if we take 0.33 and multiply it times 120000 if we take 0.42 and multiply that and 0.25, This is going to give me 39600. This is going to give me 50400. 30,000. Okay, if you add that, we get 120,000. If the stocks increase 9% in value, the bonds gain 8%, and the real estate gains 5%, losses. What is the net change in the value of this portfolio? So we got 9% times 39600. We've got 0 0.08 times 5040 0.05 times 30,000. So 3564-4032-1500. So now, you're going to do 39600, which was the initial plus this new rate. Then you're going to do 50,400 plus that 8% that we just found, 4032. And then you're going to do 30,000 minus, because it says losses. Minus 1,500. If you take all of that and add it all together, then you get $126,096. And that's in the total investment. This is what a lot of people do. They compare the portfolios of people. So you want to look at which portfolio would you consider to be risky. And um, they, we've got Deans and we got Jacks. Um, so the reason why uh, Jacks portfolio would be more risky is because it's most mostly speculative and of common stocks. So it's mostly made up of um, common stocks. So 
speculative stocks and common stocks. Hey, babe, y'all come in. So Jax, and it's common and speculative. Okay, so common and speculative. What things, babe? What approximate percent change did you have in asset class? Complete the table below using the investment portfolio pie chart. Estimate percentage for each of the asset classes using the pie chart as a reference. Um, you can do this if you want to. You don't have to do this one. Okay. Um, riskiness really kind of depends on what types of stocks you're investing in. Stocks itself is risky. Um, all these other things that they're doing are not as bad. Um, you really have to think about the types of investment that you're making. So that's it.